Now we are going to see laws of refraction. Now, as you know that how the refraction occur, this we have already done, but still I will draw a figure again for you. Suppose I have one medium. So let us say this is rarer because air outside, this is comparatively denser. So the light strikes, this is the point of incidence, this one and this is the normal ray and this is the this is the refracted ray. I will just draw the figure again. This is the incident ray, this is point of incidence, this is the normal ray, it gets bent. So, let us say that this is the refracted ray. Now, the first law is that that uh, incident ray, refracted ray and normal ray all lie on same plane of paper. As you can see that they lie on same plane of paper. Second is that if we take the value of sign value of angle I and we divide it with the sign value of uh, this thing sign value of angle R, we see that the ratio is always constant and this constant is denoted by N or mu, this, this uh, symbol is mu, right. And it is being given a special name that is refractive index. It actually compares the speed of light in two different mediums. Like uh, suppose if I say uh, light passes, suppose I write like this. This means light is passing from air to glass. Light is passing from air to glass. And what we are seeing actually, we are seeing that uh, when the light passes from air to glass, that means sine of angle I and for this it is sine of angle R. We are just looking at its value and comes out to be mu. So, how we pronounce this kind of thing? We say that uh, uh, we uh, like use the term that refractive index of glass with respect to air. This means that because uh, it is being written like this. So, you will be writing this with respect to this, but otherwise for your general information light is traveling from air to glass. But we speak in this way that refractive index of glass with respect to air. But if it is written like this, that means light is traveling from glass to air, but it will be pronounced like refractive index of air with respect to glass, air with respect to glass. So, this is what. Now, and uh, one more thing, uh, this second uh, part is also uh, being given a special name, another special name that is the Snell's law. So, it is one of the postulate of laws of refraction and further it is called as Snell's law also and this mu is called as refractive index. I think you got it and this refractive index actually just compare the speed of light in two different mediums and how you pronounce it, I think you got it. If I say that light enters uh, if the light is like this, so that means light is traveling from air to glass and we are looking for refractive index of, of glass with respect to air. If I say that its value comes out to be 2 for example, then if I ask you that what will be the value of vice versa, that means when the light travel from in opposite direction that means glass to air, then it is the reciprocal of this. So, you can remember this relation refractive index of glass with respect to air is equal to 1 by refractive index of air with respect to glass. The value is just reciprocal. So, this is the important relation you need to remember, right. Now, we will be starting with the reversibility of light. Uh, the, you know that path of light is reversible. So, we will just look for that. So, I will draw another figure. Suppose I have one medium like this. Let us say this is rarer and this is denser. Do not get confused, you can take either of. You can also take denser outside, rarer uh, inside, it does not make a difference. So, now suppose if we say that light strikes like this, this is the incident ray, this is the point of incidence, this is the normal ray, it gets bent toward normal, we know that. When light passes from rarer to denser, speed gets slower, so it bends towards normal. Now, what happened? Let us name the surface as PQRS. 
so this is the incident ray for pq and like we know that light is not going to stay inside this denser medium it is obviously it is going to emerge out so let's say that this is a uh, a surface and this is going to be a uh, the ray incident ray for this surface so again this will be a point of incidence this will be a normal ray and because we know that there is rarer outside rarer denser again outside air that means rarer so it is going to bend away from normal but we are not going to call this ray as uh, refracted ray. We will be giving a special name and special name will be emergent ray. The special name will be emergent ray. So, what is emergent ray? Emergent ray is a ray which travels through certain medium, which travels through certain medium and ultimately returns to its original medium that means you have seen that that uh, it suffered refraction it was in its original medium then it suffered refraction and now it is emerging to its own original medium and this ray is now is called as emergent ray that means it has it, it has been emer it has been emerged out so and you know that the angle between this ray and the normal ray is angle of emergence so what is angle of emergence it is angle between normal ray and emergent ray. This is angle of emergent. And two important facts you need to remember. Two important facts we need to remember is that that uh, let's name these rays. Let this is this be called as AB. Let's this is BC and this is CD. Right. So now you know that uh, uh, this thing uh, AB and CD are actually AB and CD are actually parallel to each other. Therefore, these angles are we know that these angles are angle I angle R. Therefore, these angles are equal that is they act as an alternate angles. We know that when alternate angles are equal that means lines are parallel. So, we just conclude that uh, this is a result you will be doing in high standard that uh, this is so but in your standard you will be just taking it as a result you will be using directly. So, what is what it has been proved that these lines these one this uh, emergent ray and incident ray they are parallel because the angle of emergence and uh, incidence is equal as their alternate angles. So, we say that when alternate angles are equal then uh, this thing rays are parallel. So, therefore, emergent ray is parallel to uh, emergent ray. But let us uh, trace the path for the incident ray, but uh, uh, if in case we consider that there would not be at any denser medium, then what would have been the path of the incident ray? So, it will be a straight line obviously, but it is not like this. The path is like the incident ray is here, its path after refraction has become this thing. But if there would not have been any medium or if there would not have any uh, refraction, then its path would have been the straight line. So, this phenomena is something called as lateral displacement is called as lateral displacement. What is it? It is shift in the path of shift in the path of incident ray when it travels through certain medium and finally returns to its original medium. So, this is what is called as lateral displacement and due to lateral displacement it has been proved the two results that alternate angles are equal and two rays are actually parallel to each other. And uh, moreover this is the you can say uh, if somebody asks you about that is the path of light reversible or not. So, you are going to answer yes the path of right, uh, light is reversible. So, as the light is traveling this way it is just traveling like this, this, this and this. So, if you just reverse out like if the, uh, if the uh, light uh, ray, uh, ray of light enters through this direction if I say it enters through this direction then it will again follow the same path. So, we say that light of path is reversible. So, I think you got it this is very important this lateral displacement and these two facts which we have been uh, which we have discussed now. Now, it is time as you know about uh, refraction now. So, it is time to know about the consequences of refraction that where do you get to see this kind of refraction. Do we have any practical uh, you can say any uh, any practical thing which we see in daily life which is due to refraction. So, yes it is there. One is that 
stick immersed in water stick immersed in water appears to be bent what happens suppose uh, if you take a glass of water or uh, if you take a tumbler and you add water to it and if you add any stick to it so what happens you see that uh, the stick appears to be floating we see that the stick it looks like that stick is floating in the water so why it's it's so it's just because of refraction look how suppose this is my tumbler and this is the water inside this is my stick let's name the stick let's keep its name as a b now we know that light is everywhere so obviously light will be passing in water also but when light strikes any uh, substance we know that it gets reflected it if it if it strikes any opaque substance it gets reflected so let's say that it gets reflected from this point so reflected ray because this is the same medium water so that means it will be traveling a straight line path right now the, uh, when the light ray after reflection that means this reflected ray touch the water surface that means now it is trying to it will go out not trying ultimately it is going to go out so this is water water means denser medium and outside is air that means rarer medium so that means the, now it is going to pass into another medium and we know that when the light passes from an, one medium to another it suffers refraction and here it is traveling from denser to rarer that means so this is the incident ray this is point of incident it is going to bend away from normal we know that when light passes from denser to rarer it bends away from normal let's take one more ray so let's say this is one more ray again this is normal it is going to bend towards normal so as we see that refracted rays are not meeting but if we produce them if we produce them they meet at this point so let's say like this we keep the name of this point as b dash so what what happens as you can see that we know that images formed where two points two rays meet each other so we see that the refracted rays are meeting at point b dash therefore the stick appears to be ab dash this is the apparent image the stick appears to be ab dash otherwise the real image is ab so this is all due to refraction i think you got it that how you need to answer it just draw the figure and say that uh, from this end the ray get reflected and the interface of two medium it gets suffers refraction when we meet refracted ray it meet at certain point so the stick appears to be a, a b dash but actually it is a b so that is why it appears to be floating so we say that stick immersed in water appears to be bent just because of refraction another second consequence we'll be discussing is that level of water appears to be raised that means if you have any uh, pond or something and there is water inside you cannot see the exact uh, you cannot um, you can say uh, what you see is the false depth it is not the correct depth that you can see from outside suppose if i say this is my pond right so what happened it is the water is filled inside so what happens light enters so when light enters it strikes the bottom and from bottom it gets reflected so we say that it gets reflected and travels a straight line path through water like this right so now it's time then the it is going to pass into a rarer medium because air is outside so that means it is going to suffer refraction let's draw a normal ray away from normal again away from normal so two refracted rays are not meeting at any point but if you produce them they meet at this point so if the depth real depth if you talk about if the real depth is b but it appears to be b dash so we can say that we cannot actually know the correct depth of any pond or any tumbler which carries a water it is again just due to a refraction so you need to draw these kind of figures i think you got it just from this point take one ray then normal then away from normal another one ray the uh, normal away just meet them and the point where it is meeting is in a image so this is what is the consequence of the refraction i think you got it now we'll start with the prism